Emily's plan will go well. Oh, but Kai still looks quite worried. Uh, let's go talk to her. Emily still isn't back. I hope she didn't run into any trouble. Yeah, that's true. Traveler, I had my men start spreading the information you requested. The crowd is gone now too, but I have to admit, I'm not really sure what's going on. After listening to Emily's plan, I started getting the materials together and arranging personnel. I barely had a second to spare last night. To be honest, I'm still not sure how the crime was committed that night. The key clue was right in front of us the entire time! <laughs> let's go! We'll show you where the culprit hit a goose! Glaze Lily, huh? I think I've heard of it before. It's a flower from Liu, right? Well, did you know, it only blooms at night. Emily, you're back! Exactly as expected. A flower that only blooms at night. Ah, like the Neelipala Lotus. Exactly. Although, the Nilopala Lotus wouldn't be a good substitute in this scenario. When it's closed, the gaps between the petals are too large. That's why Kyria chose the Glaze Lily as his mechanism. He would start by preparing an Agus sample. There's a sticky substance on the edge of the flower petals. It's one I recognize. If you stick the petals together with slime condensate, then in the daytime, the glazed lily would act almost like a hidden container. That's right! He applied a diluted form of slime condensate to the petals to stick them together and enclosed a sample of agoust in the center. That way, the agoust would remain trapped inside during the daytime, unable to seep between the petals and evaporate into the air. This also allowed the culprit to plant the poison well in advance while his targets remained oblivious. However, the diluted slime condensate wouldn't be viscous enough to prevent the petals of the glaze lily from opening at night. So by nightfall, the flower would bloom, thereby forcing the target to inhale the agoose trapped inside. And Kyria could execute his revenge without having to step foot inside the room during the night. By the next morning, the sample of agoose would have nearly fully evaporated. The glaze lily would have already closed its petals and any lingering odor would be concealed by the fragrance of the other flowers in the room. Wait a second. You're telling me this version of a goose is so toxic, inhaling the minute amount trapped inside a flower is enough to kill a grown man? And how did Edgar even survive ingesting a whole bottle of the stuff? That's because a goose is just as dangerous now as it was all those years ago. The level of toxicity has never changed. Only a small subset of people are truly at risk. Ah, you mean people who are sensitive to elemental energy. So it's just some sort of happy coincidence that Sylvain and Lucian are allergic to the stuff? That can't be right. They were involved in the operation all those years ago. If the stuff gave them a bad reaction, they would have known from the very start. I wouldn't use the word allergic, necessarily. It's more like they're susceptible to its effects. But that distinction isn't important right now. 
You can think of it this way. It's not that Sylvain and Lucian are innately sensitive to elemental energy, but that Kyria found a way to ensure that they would be. In Fontaine, I experienced how drinking primordial seawater made me more attuned with the element of hydro. But that substance would be hard to get around here. The incense I smelled earlier seemed familiar. Thinking back on it, I'm almost certain it was the scent of spirit borneal. In Sumeru, scholars use spirit borneal to aid meditation and stimulate their connection to the Dendro Archon. Alchemically produced essential oils, the primordial seawater that caused unrest in Fontaine not too long ago. All of those are substances that can heighten your sensitivity to elemental energy. That stuff gave us a lot of trouble when we first came to Sumeru. Ah, oh, yes. I definitely remember that. In Sumeru, it's not uncommon to use incense indoors, so its presence wouldn't arouse suspicion. The flowers in the room could also serve to mask the scent. Flowers are pretty important to this plan, huh? The glazed lily is native to Liwa. It would be completely unnatural to have one here in Sumeru if it weren't for the exhibition. What a coincidence. Actually, it's not a coincidence at all. No wonder he was willing to pay a small fortune to rent out the hotel. He probably used the mora Yelena left him, don't you think? That money was supposed to set him free. But in the end, it was just a tool for his revenge. There's a saying among forensic doctors in Fontaine. Every step you take leaves a mark. But up until this point, we haven't been able to detect any trace of Curia's activities. That's not because he was coming and going undetected, or because he's some kind of evil spirit, but because he's been disguised as someone else this entire time. Creating such an intricate mechanism out of a glaze lily, setting up the spirit Borneal in advance, and arranging for Sylvain and Lucian to stay at the hotel, it all points to one person. The expert in charge of the entire exhibition. Kyria and Edgar are one and the same. But Kyria was only in his teens back then. He wouldn't even be 40 years old by now. Edgar's lived here for so many years. Even if he changed his appearance, going that long without giving anything away, it would be impossible. B bad news, Sheriff! Mr. Edgar was attacked! What? A dark shadow-like figure just ran out of his room. It was giving off a really ominous aura. But before we could even react, the figure up and disappeared like some sort of ghost or something. By the time we got a look inside the room, Mr. Edgar was gone! Do you think Kyria kidnapped him? I need you to think very carefully about this. Are you certain that figure wasn't Edgar himself? Uh, I mean, Mr. Edgar was so frail. I don't see how he could have moved that fast. It would seem Master decided to tap into an ill-advised source of power. What? But that's so dangerous with the condition he's in. Uh, it's... But why? Why would he do that? He's already accomplished his revenge. No. If his aim was to target everyone who had a hand in Yelena's death... If he left Sylvain alive yesterday, not out of a desire to see him suffer, but to confirm the truth about why Yelena chose to die... Then... There's still one target left. <laughs> 